I'm going to show you how I used my trailer hitch to make a fourth brake light on the back of my truck using $20 worth of parts that I got on Amazon so that the fourth brake light is a strobing light instead of a constant light when you step on the pedal. So this is the part that I bought on Amazon, but I didn't like the way that the wiring is hanging down that requires a seven pin to four flat converter and all that other stuff. It looks really clunky and ugly. So I set out to improve on that. This is the unit that I received and it has a little square hole right there. And that's where this wire, which has the four flat connector originally came out. So it looped around inside the hollow of this tubing and then popped out right here so it could go down and connect to the splice connector at the back of your truck. But I didn't want that to be so unsightly because I want to leave it like that all the time. So the first thing I did was cut this wire. Here's my new one. Here's the first modification I made. So I cut the wire and shortened it um, and then fed it back out of the little square hole and out the back of the tube. So now when I put this into my trailer hitch, it feeds in, the tube completely covers this and the wire comes out the back of the trailer hitch receiver tube instead of hanging down below the truck. And then I shortened this amount just exactly enough to go up to the four flat female connector that I installed underneath my truck so that this wire goes up right below the floor bed of the the floor of the back of the bed and connects very tidy. And so that's the only part of this that you won't see in the video. But now I want to show you what I did next. I wanted this not just to come on when the brake lights come on, but I wanted it to flash. And so here's how I went about that. So this connector has only three wires. The female is the ground and then either of these is the right and left turn signal leads. And so I wanted to test this on the bench, and so I just have a 12 volt motorcycle battery connected to the positive and negative, and I'm gonna connect these to both these wires and show you how it behaves and even how bright it is. So this white lead is connected to the ground of the 12 volt battery. The red lead is connected to the positive, to the positive side. And when I take the positive side and connect it to the right lead, or in this case, the, the farthest from the ground, you get nothing, and the center lead, you get nothing. But when you touch them both, you get a very nice bright LED response. So both leads need to have power at the same time in order for this system to light up. Just for reference, when you're looking at this, the outside lead, as I've shown you, is green, yellow in the middle, and white on the right. So the result of this particular wiring configuration is that there's no pin in the fourth position here, which normally runs to the running lights. So this unit gets no electricity from the running lights, but it does get power anytime the turn signals or the brake lights are applied. But since it requires power to both terminals to light up, it only comes on when you have your brake lights on or your hazards, in which case both turn signals get power at the same time. So that really bright LED response that it has is the same brightness to my eyes as my LED taillights on my brand new truck are, even in broad daylight in the Arizona sun. So I think the performance of the light as far as brightness is perfect. But I really wanted to catch your attention more than just come on as a fourth brake light since I have the high brake light as well. So I bought this little guy on eBay. It is a strobe controller. It cost me about $8. Um, and its whole function is just to take the power when it comes into the light and pulse it so that the brake light will strobe as the brakes are applied instead of just be constant and hopefully maybe catch the attention of some guy who was about to run into the back of me. So I like this little strobe unit. Um, I haven't tested it yet. You're gonna be with me for that part but I don't want it just dangling along here, making an additional ugly pile of pigtail lines behind my car. So I'm gonna install it inside this tube. This plastic receiver hitch tube is totally useless. Um, the bulk of this LED light is sitting right behind the panel. So I'm gonna remove the lens, remove the light, install the strobe inside the unit, and then have it just look just like this, and no one will even know that it's been modified to strobe. So this unit is a sealed piece. If you can see down inside the back, the wires now come out this central tube 
um, and there are holes that lead all the way to the circuit board. So in the end, I want to seal those up so this will be more waterproof than it currently is. But there are no cracks and no gaps in the rest of the system. So the only way to get into it is to take the front lens off. I had to guess how that would be, that I could just treat it like an iPhone or anything else and open it up by prying on it. And it turns out that works just fine. You just have to pry the lens out. And it has no real tabs or anything like that inside it. It's just mostly a friction fit. And it looks like that. So as you can see from the lens, um, it doesn't have any strong tabs you're trying to target or push. You know, there's a very small one right there. So it's mostly just prying it out. And then this is the circuit board that's on the inside. Um, it's just got the white, yellow, and green leads on the surface, and then all those little white squares are the red LEDs that you saw functioning a minute ago. When I take off the screws, the back of it is extremely simple, and then there's one integrated circuit module attached to the back that solders through the board to reach those leads. So I'm just gonna be super careful with that. But this gives me this great big wide cavity inside that I'll be able to install the strobe module inside. It just exactly fits. Um, and so once I attach the wires, shove it inside there and seal everything back up again, I should have a strobing module that looks exactly like the original. I'm gonna cut right through the three wires down from the circuit board, install the strobe module onto those, and then shove all the wiring back inside the housing. You notice the view changed. If you have never seen or used one of these magnetic project mats, I got it on Amazon for almost nothing, and it's magnetic. <laughs> and so I put all the screws from the circuit board on it, and they stay mostly in place. You can compartmentalize everything by where they came from. It's not tacky, and it's also good to work on. It is so worth it. Since I only want the brake light to come on when I'm applying the brakes and I don't want it flashing with a turn signal or anything like that, I can't really think of any reason why the green and yellow leads need to be separate in this mod that we're doing. So I'm going to twist them together um, and uh, this is the ground because I needed a gator clip for it. And then this is the positive still. So with the two of them twisted together, um, all the LEDs light up. It's interesting that the LEDs are red and so is the lens. You kind of would have expected white LEDs and a red lens, but everything is red. So I'm gonna proceed and connect everything with the yellow and the green connected together for the rest of the work. So when you get back to the main plug at the back of the unit, even though there are two leads here, um, they're effectively gonna be one downstream of that point. Okay, just to try this out um, before we get too far into it. Um, on this strobe, it says that there is, um, the input side has positive on the red and black on the ground. So I'm gonna connect my positive lead and my negative lead to both of those. And so now on the output side, it says that this is the negative wire and this is the positive. This is a blue positive wire. So if I put the ground to the white side of my, to the white side of my LED and the blue to the positive side, that's the effect of the strobe. So now I hope to have that behind my car every time I step on the brakes, getting people's attention more than just a solid brake light down at the trailer hitch level. So let's wire it up. So as I said, I can't find any reason why the yellow and green leads should be dealt with separately. So I'm going to take them, which is the power side, and connect them all to the positive side of the strobe controller at the same time. I'm gonna seal this all up inside here even though it should be watertight when I'm finished. Um, so I'm going to strip the 
ground lead back far enough that I can have the three different leads all snuggled together inside one piece of heat shrink tube and it should be um, just a little bit thicker than the original installation when I'm finished. So with everything neatly sealed and protected, I'm going to pack it all back inside the housing. And I want to do so in a way that leaves it where I can waterproof it and leaves it with a pigtail that's just the right length so there's no unnecessary wiring hanging out behind the back of my truck. So this barely fits, and so I'm going to tuck the wires for both sides of the strobe inside first to avoid damaging them if I can help it and then when I push it it's exactly the size that it needs to be I'm going to tuck this one down behind it and it'll leave me just enough room to screw the face back on the outside without bending the little IC chip that's on the inside I like that So let's see if it still works. Ground, positive. I should be able to touch either lead now and get the same response because before where I needed to touch them both, since I blended them together, a positive signal on either one of these leads now gives me the strobe effect. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put the lens back in place. Um, there's a little key in the lens right there that has to snap into this part of the circuit board. Fits back nice. I'm gonna put some silicone around this just so that no water can get into it. And then I'm gonna waterproof the inside of this so that no water can get in this direction and have it completely sealed up. But all I wanna do is try and block all those holes so that if water gets back in there or bugs or anything else, it's not gonna be a problem. So this is just a white silicone latex that I had laying around the garage for some other project, and I'm just gonna use it to fill up that space, seal around the bottom of the wire, and then I'll put the clear silicone around the outside after we're all done, but let's go test it. Here's a quick view of how it is installed. The way I ran it, the brake light 
it has the wiring run right out the back of the receiver hitch and it runs right up to my four flat connector underneath the frame so it's very tidy and clean and waterproof so this is the effect of the strobe on the trailer hitch light when the brake pedal is held down before it was constant on just like the brake lights and you can see this particular unit is just about as bright as my brake lights and my high center brake light when my headlights are on and the running lights are on the tail light is off even though I spliced the yellow and green wire together, um, the blinker doesn't cause the brake light to flash. And with the headlights on and the hazard flashers on, the low brake light is not affected. But finally, with the headlights on and the brake pedal depressed and the hazards off, the bottom brake light works great and I think it'll do a lot to reduce the likelihood of somebody running into the back of the truck. I hope that helps. Thanks for listening.